Welcome to Zig for the Uninitiated. Today we're going to talk about the stack. We're going to talk about the heap. If you remember when we talked in my video about process memory management, process allocate memory into several different segments. We got lots of different segments, but two of them are the stack and the heap. And those are the two that you're going to think about the most when you're programming. In order to understand the stack and the heap, I think it's useful to go through a very small program and see how the stack works. And then we can take a look at what problems or questions we might get from when we work at the stack. And then look how the heap can help solve those problems. All right, so we talk about the stack. We're going to be talking about functions and all their local variables. In fact, that's what the stack is for. When you have the stack, you're allocating area for your um, local variables. So every time a function is called, what's a new stack frame is created. And that stack frame is created so it can hold all the state that a function needs. So if we look at our program here, we have this main function. We have an x, you know, y, z local variables. And we see two function calls to this sum function, which works just as you'd expect, x and y. And we have x plus y going to some temporary variable and we're returning that temporary variable. Now, obviously, very simplified and not exactly how you'd write most code. But for educational purposes, this whole uh, explanation is simplified. So in, before people get all upset about how I explain this and talk about registers and everything, yes, I know about registers. But the idea is to get an intuition about how the stack works. And the registers just aren't going to help with that. Maybe in a future video, we could talk about registers. But for now, I want to understand the stack. So when we look at this function or this program here, we're going to see in our bottom stack frame here, right? We have a little stack frame. We're going to say x. We're going to create an x variable. We're going to set it to 1. We're going to create a y variable and we're going to set it to 10. And we're going to create a z variable. But what does the z variable equal? Well, we can say, well, it's the sum of x and y, right? But I can't really store this. I need a value, right? So what we need to do is call, some, you know, sum of x and y. And when we call sum of x and y, it's going to create a new stack frame for us. So we're going to get this new frame here for this sum function. And so when the sum function is called, it's going to allocate space for itself on the stack. So it's going to get x, it's going to have a y, and it's going to have a temp. Okay, well, x and y are parameters. And so we're going to get the same values. These 1 is going to be copied there. And that 10 is going to be copied into there. And then it does the calculation. x plus y equals 11. And we're going to return that 11. So when we return, that value is going to be copied out from temp and put into the z. And so that's our sum function, right? And once that sum function is done, the stack frame is no longer needed. So we'll just erase this, right? But I want to draw your attention. I didn't erase the variables because the variables still exist. They are, or rather, they don't exist, but the data is still there. But they're no longer valid because the stack frame doesn't exist. And you might ask, well, why can't I reach back up there and, and use those variables? Well, the answer is why we have the second sum, right? So let's say we call sum again. Well, when we call sum again, a new stack frame is going to be created. And it's going to take up the exact same space in memory that the old one took. So all these values will still be in their memory, but we don't want to reference them because when well, the next sum function is called, they're going to be replaced with new values. So we know that the sum is going to take in uh, x and a y. And in this case, x and y are both z. So z is going to be copied here and here. And we're going to get a temporary value of 22. And now that 22, 
we've got it, we're going to return it back into the Z memory. And so when we got that Z memory, it's going to be 22. It's pretty simple, right? So what are some problems that could come up with this? Well, there's two. One thing that you have to know about stacks uh, is that when we make the stack, we want to know the size at compile time of the stack. We want to know how much space we need for the local variables. What if we had a, what if sum was a function that instead of taking an X and a Y took, um, you know, an array of valuables of so one, two, three, four, or maybe not even an array, just a list, right? And that was inputted in from the user. And so we didn't know at run, we didn't know until runtime what the amount of values we needed to sum were. Maybe we need some two values, maybe we need some 50 values, maybe we need some 3,000 values. The stack can't allocate space enough at compile time if it doesn't know how, how much space we need. Okay, so that's the first problem. What if we need to deal with memory that's dynamic? Uh, the second problem is, what if I wanted to use temp? Like, what if temp was actually a big value, a value that was you know, 30 uh, or 300 bytes long, right? We don't want to be copying 300 bytes out and then moving it around everywhere and then copying it out. That would take a lot of time. It would be very inefficient. So what would we do if we had a big value? That's our second problem. What if we want a big value that we want to last longer than the, um, the scope of the function? Okay, so with the heap, we can solve these problems. For the first problem, we have the problem of dynamic memory, right? We need to know or we need to use memory dynamically. We don't know until runtime how much memory you need, but at runtime we'll know. So let's say in this example, we're going back to where the sum is now taking a list of uh, variables. What we could do is we could allocate that list on the heap. Because at runtime we could say, hey, I need this many variables or this many bytes of data and we can put it on there. And then in the function, we don't need to pass in that list. What we can do is pass in a pointer to that list, right? And it points to that list. And what, if you remember from the last video, pointers are always of a known size. And so this would be fine now when we create this stack frame for this function, we can know at compile time how much space it needs. It just needs a space for a pointer, be that four bytes or eight bytes, depending on your architecture. Okay, so that's how we can do that, solve that dynamic problem. How do we solve the problem of lifetime? Right, a lifetime meaning the lifetime of variables. When you're programming, every variable has a lifetime, a time where it is valid to be used. So in a stack context, the variables in a stack frame are only valid during the lifetime of the function. Once the function call uh, exits, once you return from the function, those variables are no longer valid. And anything you want to keep from there, you have to copy out. And that's where we're talking about the problem of what if we have a really big value, 300, 400, 1,000 bytes? We don't really want to be copying that around everywhere. Well, once again, what if instead of putting that function or that variable on the stack, we put it onto the heap? We have this you know, big 300 byte value or something like that, right? And then instead of returning the value itself, we just take a result, which is once again, a pointer to a value on the heap. And we can do that. The result size is now that, or rather the size of the result is the size of your pointer, which is once again, four or eight bytes, depending on your architecture. That's easy. Those are simple to copy very quick one instruction copies, okay? 
That is the value of the heap. It allows us to do things that we aren't going to be able to do on the stack very efficiently. This is all I want to cover in this video. Next video, I'm going to go over um, a practical program, an actual Zig program, and we're going to look at the different ways the uh, stack and the heap are used, as well as other things like static and text memory. I'll see you next time. Happy programming.